For the saints that go before us, thanks be to God. For the saints that walk beside us, thanks be to God. For the whole company of heaven, thanks be to God. For our openness to God's living presence here among us now. We pray in faith and trust. Amen. Gracious God, give us time this night to make a prayer that will become the prayer of our soul. Help us to listen to the voices of longing in our hearts and listen to our hungers. Help us give attention to the unexpected happenings at the edges of our life. Help us listen to our memory and to the inrush of our future to the voices of those near us and those we have lost. Help us to know that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses and give us the eyes of faith to know that we are loved and forgiven and free. Amen.
How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breadth, smile, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Second John twenty one nineteen through to the end. After this he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. I recently spent a week in the rolling hills of North Wales at a Jesuit retreat house. I went on this, my first silent retreat, somewhat naively, without having much of an idea of what I hoped it would bring. Certainly I wanted some time out of London, in the countryside. I wanted some time to myself, some peace and quiet. I wanted a week where I was looked after where I didn't have to cook for myself or do the washing up. Spending a week in silence and contemplation, without the worldly distractions bombarding me each day, I was led from moment to moment by the simple rhythm of the day. In that space, in that rhythm, the hugeness and minutiae of God's presence in the world was inescapable. In that presence, I experienced moments, fleeting moments, where I felt that I was able to allow myself to be truly held, to be seen, to be loved. Each morning I met with my assigned spiritual director who helped me sift through the soup of thoughts and feelings that bubbled up for me throughout the week. At one of these meetings, when discussing one of the many things that I often worry about, my companion for the week explained that when we feel that we might have tested the limits of God's love for us, for whatever reason, God always responds with, I love you more. End of. I win. I love how competitive 
this makes God seem. That whatever we feel about God and whatever hurting parts of ourselves or of our world that we bring before God, God's love for us will always triumph. God always wins. The problem that I have, and maybe you do too, is that I often will forget this truth. Which is why the beloved disciple from today's Gospel is my new role model. There's something in the quiet, humble anonymity of the beloved disciple from John's Gospel that draws me in with wonder. It's clear that his relationship with Jesus was special. The intimate conversation at the Last Supper, his presence at the cross where Jesus gave his last words to join him and Mary together as mother and son. He was first to hear the news of Jesus' resurrection from Mary Magdalene. He did not flee, but stayed after Jesus' crucifixion. He followed Jesus without question, without doubt, and loved him, as today's poem says, even better after death. We do not know for certain, of course, who the beloved disciple was. Theologians propose John the Evangelist, of course, but also perhaps Lazarus or Mary Magdalene, but maybe also he's you or me. Maybe the disciple is never named, never made known for certain, so that we too can place ourselves into this space that bears witness to the intimacy that is meant for each and every one of us. The closeness enjoyed by the disciple whom Jesus loved is the closeness that is also mine and yours, because we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Follow me, Jesus says. Follow me. So important a command that he says it twice in this, the final passage of John's Gospel. And even when I feel that I am not able to, or I am unworthy to, or I get stuck in the mess and busyness of life, or when the pain of being alive feels suffocating, or when life gets really lifey and I need to go on another retreat, or when I forget and need reminding of the peace that is always available to me, if only I just allowed myself to see it. Even then, God says, I love you more. End of. I win. Follow me. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God, we have been gathered by you, caught in your net, summoned to your table. As we open ourselves to your generous hospitality, let your spirit move among us and be present in the food we share, so that this bread and wine become for us the living presence of Jesus. That so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we may proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are your messengers and prophets who have proclaimed liberty to the captives and good news to all who are poor. Blessed is your son, Jesus, who came to make known your mysteries, to seek out and save what is lost in this life and to heal and bring wholeness by the forgiveness open to all, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. Remembering the eternal self-giving of Christ, we proclaim the mystery of God's presence among us in this bread and wine made one with you, eternal God. We offer these gifts of your creation, and with them, ourselves, as we are, so that you can make us who we can be. And now all honor and glory be yours, eternal God, through all ages and in all time, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from temptation, and deliver us from evil. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
God of love, we thank you for this food for our journey. As we have shared this communion together, give us grace and energy to live your risen life. Amen. May the road rise to meet you and the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may we know that we are held in the hollow of God's hand. Amen. <laughs>